Our final project in Watercolor Jumpstart will be a line and wash sketch based on this photo from Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. This is the kind of scene that causes us a lot of trouble when we're on location because there's just so much going on. When I took the photo, I was primarily interested in this boat and its reflection. So one possibility would be just to isolate that one boat and leave out all the background clutter and the other boats. The usual way to work through these decisions is to make a series of thumbnail sketches. I found that many students are very resistant to the idea of doing thumbnail sketches though because they get really caught up in detail and so each sketch is very tedious and they feel like they're doing an awful lot of work and the sketches don't look like anything. So what I like to do instead is something I call exploratory drawing. It might even be better to call it exploratory scribbling because I'm not really trying to make a drawing right now. I'm trying to use the act of drawing to focus my attention on the scene and on the decisions that I have to make. And the pencil is really just an aid to getting you to focus your attention on particular elements and think about, do I want to include this other boat? How much of the background do I want to use? How far back am I going to go back with this boat? It's the thinking process that really matters here and the decision making. And when you're done, you may notice I'm working on um, copier paper because I'm going to toss this. I'm not keeping this drawing, this scribble. I'm just using this as a brainstorming tool. Normally I would do quite a few of these exploratory scribbles. And then when I find one that I like, I start thinking about, now what format do I want to use? Maybe a vertical format would be nice. And so since I haven't drawn any box around this to start, I'm free to put my boundaries wherever I choose. Instead of limiting myself to saying I'm always going to make it the same shape as the photo or a quarter sheet of watercolor paper, for example. So this allows me to explore more creative possibilities than I might have thought of originally. Even though there's a template on my website that you can download for this project, like all the other projects, I encourage you to try this exploratory drawing. Give yourself maybe a minute at most per drawing. Just sketch them out quickly, set a timer. When the timer goes off, flip the page and start another one. So let's suppose that I've decided on how I want to format my um, painting and I've chosen to work on a quarter sheet of watercolor paper. That's 15 by 11 inches, so it'll give us 10 by 14 inches about when we have left some room to tape the edges of our paper down. So I've drawn out a little 10 by 14 box and now I'm going to work on doing a more careful drawing so this is not necessarily what you would do on location. This is what you might do if you had been out for the day sketching and you decide you want to do a larger line and wash in the studio. As I've said before, one of the things I really enjoy about line and wash is the somewhat primitive nature of the drawings that I do when I'm in a hurry out in the field. And I want to keep that character with this, so I'm not going to worry about trying to make a perfectly accurate rendering. And of course another option you can consider is simply blowing up the portions of the photograph that you're interested in and tracing. A lot of people feel like that's cheating but you actually do train your eye and your hand by tracing. So it's not a bad idea to do some of that tracing um, to paint because that way you separate the challenge of learning to draw and the challenge of learning to uh, learn watercolor techniques. So you can focus on learning just one thing and not uh, have so much going on that's new to you that it's overwhelming. So this is what I came up with after I finished my drawing and transferred it to my watercolor paper and then went over all the lines with a waterproof black pen. Uh, after the ink dries completely, you can go back with a kneaded eraser and lift off any graphite lines that might still show so you have nice, clean, crisp black lines. 
I want to point out a couple of things about this. The, um, the name of the boat, the Lucky Lady, I just inked those letters in with black ink rather than drawing an outline to fill in with black paint because it's easier. Um, also, I noticed after I transferred it that the reflection of the foreground piling somehow wandered off vertical. So if you want to fix that in yours, feel free. This drawing is available for download from the Watercolor Jumpstart class page, uh, as is the photograph that we're working from. So you can download those things, and if you want to just trace my drawing as a first attempt, that's fine. But I encourage you to also try doing a drawing of your own. It's always good to get your personal take. Maybe you'll want to design it a little bit differently than I did. One thing we haven't talked about up until now is color. And when I took this photograph and when I look at the scene, the things that really got my attention were the blues, all the different blues in the water and the sky, and that turquoise trim on the foreground boat. So I'm going to keep that in mind and kind of emphasize the, the blueness of the scene in my color choices. When you're working around man-made objects like boats and buildings, a flat brush can be a nice tool because it gets into those rectilinear shapes more easily. So I'm using a, a small flat brush to dampen the paper where I'm going to put my sky. This is a little trick that will allow me to lay an even sky wash without having to be in a big rush. So the paper will already be wet for that whole area where the sky is going to go. And then I'm going to drop color in wet and wet. And that way everything will blend nicely without me having to be in a hurry to paint it. This is sort of like what we did when we wet our paper before doing an all over wash. So I'm going to begin with some pale, cooler blues in the background. This is ultramarine blue. And I'm adding just a little bit of ultramarine violet to it to make it even cooler. And now I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of burnt sienna to gray it slightly because this is a kind of a foggy day and I want to emphasize that fogginess. So now in the distance, starting with this grayish wash, because the paper is already wet, I don't have to be in a hurry. Everything's going to blend softly. And then I'm just going to kind of let my brush wander around, and that will give a sense of maybe some haze, some fog, some clouds in the distance that aren't very um, discernible. And then as I get closer to um, the right side, I'm going to, and lower on the page, I'm going to add a little bit of a turquoisey tone. So I get my various blues going in the background. All right, since that's wet, we don't want to start next with the boats. We need to move somewhere else. So let's go down and do some of the foreground. I'm misting the foreground with my little Holbein spray bottle, getting a bunch of droplets on the paper, because I want to have sort of a little bit of a sparkly, broken reflection effect in the foreground rather than painting every reflection with a lot of detail. So having that spray on there will help kind of let the watercolor move and give the sense of sort of sparkles on the water or little bits of broken light on the water. So now notice there's sort of a, a general motion to those reflections so I'm going to move my brush in that general motion and I'm doing a little bit of skipping over certain areas and you see how having that spray on there allows me to paint around little light areas but not have them be hard edge. So I'm not trying to paint anything specific in the photo right now. I'm just getting that blue in the foreground. This is really set dressing. It's not a part of the painting that I want to labor over or really draw a lot of attention to. 
Now I've been going along putting blue down, but right here beyond this boat, I actually will probably have some dark shadows there. Um, the water will be kind of a darker green, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in so that it can blend softly. So you see I'm not really respecting the lines, just letting my brush wander around using the lines from the line and wash as general guides, but not coloring them in like a coloring book. So down here we have a dark reflection, a shadow area where the water's quite green. So we'll drop that in. You might want to refer to the photograph. I can't fit that and the painting on the the same screen without making the painting too small for you to see what I'm doing. In this area we've got a reflection of some browny tones, some warm golden tones on the side of the boat, some wood, so I'm going to throw a little of that in. Okay, now let's put in a reflection of that turquoise trim on the boat and that comes down sort of a little snaky line that wanders through our reflection. At this point I want to put in the distant hills and unfortunately I did not realize until I started doing the voiceover that I had moved this so that it is just out of the page. So here's another piece of paper that I've put a little bit of sky color on and I'm going to show you what I did that you couldn't see in the last little step. So I'm just taking my flat brush and I'm kind of letting it trace along the upper edges of those hills and I'm not worrying about the lower part, just getting that sort of skyline. And then I wet my brush and rinsed it and I go along and take the lower edge and just blend it out. Okay, so now we're back to the piece we're actually working on. And now I'm going to begin putting in some of the shadow underneath that pier that's behind the boats. And I'm not trying to paint any of the details that are back there. I just want this to be a shadow area. And then I'm going to put in a suggestion of that railing. And I, I don't want this to be any more than a suggestion. So I'm using my flat brush to kind of make some linear shapes and leave some gaps as though the light is coming through. I'm changing the railing a little bit from the photo um, making a little bit more open and a little bit less fussy. Um, I just want this little suggestion of some kind of a pier and railing. I don't want that to be too much of what the scene is about. And then while this background area is still wet from putting our mountains in, I'm putting in some vertical strokes and letting them bleed so they'll look like uh, masts and antennas sticking up into the fog so my scene will look foggier than the actual photograph. Um, you might have had a little bit of trouble seeing what I was doing with my brush back there because my hand is in the way. Um, what I do is hold the brush completely vertical and I just touch the tip of the flat brush, that chisel edge, and that makes the line. I don't drag it along the paper. I kind of touch it and then lift it and touch it again to make another section. And that's a really great way of making kind of a straight line using a flat brush or the suggestion of a straight line that isn't so obvious. So now I'm going to go through and drop in some darker color underneath there, leave little gaps here and there, and that'll give the suggestion of maybe there's some stuff back there underneath um, it's not just solid. Okay, so I let that dry a little bit, and now I can go in and start working on the boats. 
and I'm going to go on to the shadow side of the far boat and everything that's in shadow is going to get a bluish wash. Now as I do the hull, the shadow helps to show the, the shape of the hull. So I want the area right up here by the bow to be a little bit lighter so I went in there last and just dropped in clear water and let that color move. And while that wash is still wet, I'm going to drop in a little suggestion of shadows here and there underneath some of these rails and in the windows. So, and then along the hull, the back part of the hull, close to the other boat, is much more in shadow. And it'll pick up some of that green tone from the water. So I'm going to add a little of that color wet and wet and let that bleed as well. So you see how already that boat, you can start to see its form. So now we're going to do the same thing with the front boat. So on the front boat, to help bring it into the foreground, one of the things that we can do is use a little bit brighter, a little more intense color. So this is a darker shadow, so I have more contrast, which will draw the eye, and it's also a purer blue, which will draw the eye. And this is a little trick that you can use to help give the sense of um, distance in your paintings and direct the viewer's eye. Our eyes go naturally to higher contrast and purer colors, so that will help make this boat come into the foreground and be more the center of interest. Right under here there's a, a, a really intense blue shadow, so I'm going to drop in a little color wet and wet and just leave that area, that nice dark blue underneath that rail. Now we're going to do this a hull shape. So now I need to make that shadow on the hull. I want to soften this part of the shadow down here. So now you see these sort of rays of light. I'm going to drop clear water into that wet wash and then take my brush and use my thirsty brush to lift that out. Now our sky area, our fog area, is dry, so on some of these masks I'm going to add a little bit of darker color, some of the ones that I want to have appear more in the foreground. And you see how just touching that brush vertically gives a nice suggestion of a sort of there, sort of not line without making it too obvious and maybe a little bit of that too in the railing just to suggest some shadows. Now the washes on the boat are dry enough I can put in some of the shading for the windows. I'm purposely not making them too dark because in a really sunny scene a lot of light is bouncing off the windows. And then now let's go in with some warm burnt sienna for some of those wood accents.
Now I'm going to use my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to do the darker details on the boats. And the back boat, we'll do the striping on that one too. So since I forgot to draw that the lines for that stripe, I'm just going to do it with a brush stroke right in there, from there to there, kind of make a note for myself of where I want to start and finish. Now that this is dry, we can put in a few more definite shadows, add a little bit more shadow to the windows. And now we've saved the best for last. It's time to put in that turquoise on the um, hull of the boat in the foreground. Okay, let's have a look. I think that this dark reflection is too dark, so I'm going to lift a little bit of that off. I'll just take my brush, my flat brush, get it wet, blot it so it's not drippy, and then just sort of wiggle it in there and pull a little bit of that color right back off the page. Sometimes when you put the color down, it's hard to tell how dark things are. So you can always just make an adjustment later. Now I feel like there's not enough contrast between the foreground boat and the background boat, so I'm going to glaze another layer of blue over the shadow areas on that background boat to help push it back into the background more. I'm just going right over everything with that blue, help separate that boat from the foreground boat. I also feel like the shadows behind the boats need to be darkened a little bit. As you've probably noticed, watercolor darkens or lightens as it dries. So sometimes you put things down and you think they're dark enough, and then later you look at it and decide maybe they're not as dark as you had wanted. So the solution to that is to wait until it is completely dry and then add some more color. I'm getting perilously close to the fussing stage though, so I'm telling myself, okay, you got to stop soon, you got to stop soon, don't keep messing with it, you'll wreck it. Um, that's a danger, you start fussing with little details and you wreck the good that is there. I do want to show you one more little trick. I, sort of, I left out the building in the background on purpose, but I sort of feel like that... Um, the boats are great, but the pier behind them is just a little bit too vague to fit with the scene. So one thing you can do is take a watercolor pencil, this is a burnt sienna color, and I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to rule some dark brown broken lines, I'm not going over everything, right here at the base of that pier. and it's not enough to really be noticeable as a line, but it does help direct your eye and make the edge appear more definite. And I'm going to do the same thing here and there along the top edge and maybe a couple of places. So I'm changing the type of railing that we have here, leaving off that white top and all the really dark shadows because I think that would be distracting but I do want it to have a little bit of that linear quality. Again, this is one of those things where you can get carried away, so already I'm telling myself, all right, all right, you gotta stop, that's enough. So let's call it done. So at this point, you might see things that you would change if you did it again, I certainly do. I also see some things that I really like, like the way the light is bouncing off the hull and uh, emphasizing that lucky lady name painted there on the hull. I'm not wild about what I did with the pier. That was kind of an experiment, but I learned some things by doing it. So I think of this as just a first draft, and I would go back and try it again. One of the nice things about these line and wash paintings is if you have the drawing to transfer, you can very quickly transfer it again and try a completely different interpretation. You might try it without the pier at all and the fog just 
enveloping everything behind the boats so all you have is the boats. You might try it as an early morning scene with pinks and golds. You can have lots of fun just experimenting with this very same drawing and different interpretations. So if your first attempt doesn't come out exactly the way you expected or wanted, don't take that as some sort of a failure. Just take it as that was your first draft and now you've learned some things about what you like and what you don't like and give it another shot. Writers get to work in multiple drafts, so I think we should too. We work on paper, so we can't just rework the same painting over and over and over again without wearing out the paper and making it tired looking. So for watercolorists, there's a point where pulling out another sheet of paper and trying another draft is the way to go. So I hope you'll do that. Thanks for joining me on this journey through an introduction to watercolor. I'm working on a new series of videos on painting skies in watercolor. So keep practicing so you'll be ready for that. I expect to start releasing those in fall of 2018. And in the meantime, happy painting.